Hey guys, just getting ready to leave for next week's episode of Disrupt, but we realized, unfortunately, this is the last episode of the season, so well, we're not going to be able to make it to the Kyber Pass, we hope that we've been able to take you to the edge each and every episode with issues that are important to our generation. And we're not done yet. Here's one more. So this is just truly amazing, the things you do at the office. Right now, I'm going on chatterbait.com. Not like bait like fishing, but bait like masturbate. Uh, Chatterbait is one of the largest free webcam chat sites in the world. Whoa! Never been on it before, and there's a lot of penises and vaginas. How many girls do you have working for you right now? Several thousand. Several thousand, all across the U.S. or internationally? All across the world. Wow. Yeah. How much would you say on average each girl makes? Most of them don't do this as a full-time job. They do it as kind of a part-time right. thing. So, you know, I would say a typical model is, it, uh, brings in a couple hundred dollars a week. Huh. You know, girls can do it from their, a lot of girls do it from their dorm room yeah. or, or whatever, and they can sign up and be working the same day or the next day, so. What's the average age of the girls, or generally the age range? <sighs> College age. College age. Yeah. So we're back here at UCLA's Semmel Institute, and we're going to find out what makes people stimulated when they watch things like cam girls. What got you interested in the topic in the first place? What would not be interesting about this? That's very <laughs> true. So. Broadly, we study the connection between the brain and the genitalia, and specifically, we're mm -hmm. interested in understanding how people's decision-making changes when they're in a sexually aroused state. Mm -hmm. Why would you say that so many people watch porn, and a lot of them, they watch it a lot? Well, that's interesting that you mention a lot of people watch porn. Uh, what we've actually seen is the same number of people watch porn today as started watching porn when VHS came out. So wow. many people assume it's to do with the internet, right. this accessibility, but it turns out most of the accessibility first occurred with VHS tapes. Do you know um, what parts of the brain are stimulated when someone watches erotica or porn? Sure, there are a number of different areas of the brain that are, uh, become active when someone's watching a sexual film, uh -huh. and they overlap very strongly with areas that uh, become active when someone sees a portrayal of their favorite indulgent food. So if you're a chocolate connoisseur, oh. and you see uh, your favorite Belgian represented. So basically, if someone goes on the internet to find physical stimulation, that's, bas that's essentially nothing out of the ordinary, is what you're saying. It's nothing like super anything, it's not like addictive or anything super weird. So we currently don't have any reason to think that sexual images or sexual video viewing is addictive. It may be that some people like it a lot and they do it more than they intend to. Is this Jennifer? This is Jennifer. Hey, hold on, I can't see you. This is Jacob. Hey, Jacob. How's it going? I'm all right, how are you? Good, hey, all right, there you are. Hold on, let me maximize the screen. Thanks for doing this. No problem. Where are you? You're in Texas? Austin. Awesome. Oh, I love Austin. Yeah. Hey, so uh, I've never, this is my first time doing this. This is pretty crazy. Okay. Do you have a lot of people that when they're on here with you that say, say that this is their first time doing this? Yeah. Yeah, sometimes it's true. Sometimes it's like um, their way of making conversation. Do you think that some of these guys think of you actually as their girlfriend or when they're at home and I mean they're like maybe even falling in love with you? Yeah, it happens. Um, it must be kind of scary actually. You know, it's really my it's, when you see the audience that's out there, it's kind of laughable. You know, I, I say that I film from my room and probably the guys watching me are like cat a corner apartment from me. You think so? I mean, it's possible. I'm just saying they're just your run-of-the-mill guy, just like, you know, you sitting at home, the ones that go on there, so. Or me um, in my office. Yeah, I am a practice girlfriend in a lot of ways. Just the obvious question I haven't asked you is, I mean, somebody could get a screen grab and post it online and everybody could see it if they wanted to. Like, do you, does that bother you at all? No, my pussy is worldwide. <laughs> your pussy, did you just say my pussy is worldwide? I mean, it's out there already. What am I going to, I can't suck it out. You know I mean? you got to get over it and be like, it's just a bodysuit. You know? Yeah. And this is what I do. It's I might have to write that quote on my wall. Perfect. Okay, bye. Keep Austin weird. I am. Okay, bye. It's so hard to believe that we've done 17 of these disrupts. And you know that I keep in my drawer souvenirs from all of our shoots. So when we went up to Fresno, when we did the marijuana raid yeah. with the sheriffs up there, you know, we got to talk to people from Homeboy Bakery, uh, Jesus Malverde, patron saint of narco trafficking. When we went down to the border, these shit balls from India belong to you, Yunj, when you went to check out In Sanitation in India. The one thing I think that 
ties everything in common is that we have tried every single week for the past 17 episodes of Disrupt to figure out how these issues and how the change around them affects me, it affects you, it affects you every single day. You can see me on the internet. Look, Mom and Dad. I'm on the internet, on the Cam Girl site, looking for people to interview. And now, I just need to get people to come into my account and talk to me. Users zero. Okay, now it's, I have people in my room. Oh, he said, nice face. Yes, I can hear you. I like these emoticons. Don't say you like the emoticons because there's tons of it. <laughs> Oops, my mistake. Yeah, and I'm getting all sorts of weirdo emoticons here. I'm gonna go offline now. Bye, bye Mark's voice. Thanks for talking. Damn, it's like being in a bar, but like the biggest bar in the world and you're the only girl in it. It feels like a sci-fi office. Yeah, so one of the things is people are kind of reluctant to disclose intimate things about themselves right. to other people. Right. Um, but they uh, actually, in many ways, in many cases, they'll reveal more intimate information to a computer. Mm -hmm. So, for example, when you fill out an anonymous web form, right. and you ask, you know, do you uh, engage in drug use or right, right. behavior, you're more honest to a computer, but... Kind of like how people chat to anonymous strangers online, yeah. openly, I mean, or like sometimes online dating. Do you think maybe that's why people seek out things like cam girls, because it's more than what is normally occurring? And there is an idea that you can do things in virtual reality that are like super normal elicitors of behavior. So um, part of the, the, the goal here is to get uh, this non-human thing, use these kinds of human-like behaviors to make you feel comfortable, yet at some level you know it's not a real person. What would you say this says about people? The fact that they react better and more emotionally to things that look like humans but aren't humans? Like in the real world, if I'm a, a kid in a classroom as a teacher, and the teacher has to decide you know, which kid to look at. Right. If all these kids are in virtual reality. Uh -huh. uh, you can trick the kid to thinking that every that the teacher is always looking at them. Oh my okay. god. It's called non-zero-sum gaze. And, uh -huh. and it actually makes the kids learn better because they feel like... The attention's, attention's on them. On. Kind of like how yesterday when I went on a cam girl webcam, fully clothed for the record, just to interview the people, like the guys who use it, but they thought I was talking to them. Those guys are thinking you're all looking, it's exactly analogous to this classroom setting right, right, right. when you were on that chat, Yeah. is that every one of those guys was thinking you're the teacher. Looking, looking at, at them. them. Well, if you were to make a guess based on the research you've done so far and the way things are going in society with social media and the internet and all sorts of super normal stimuli, what are we? What are humans going to be like in twenty years? Twenty, thirty, fifty? Yeah. Well, I think it's it's going to be kind of an arms race because there's going to be people on the one hand trying to, and then a lot of it's advertising people trying uh -huh. to use these techniques to get us to buy cars. Yeah. And on the other hand, there'll be I think a growing market of people trying to protect us from ourselves. And this is really happening live right now. Yeah. Ew, she's sticking it in her butt. Oh. She doesn't even look like she's enjoying this. Ah! Is she making a lot of money to do this? Because if not, like, what are you doing? She's being a star. She's being, she's putting she's a dildo famous. in her vagina. She's being famous. Okay, so I'm going back on the Chatterbait site as a cam girl to talk to the guys who are on this. So here goes. Watching you, you're at home. I'm in my office. Are you guys working? Do you remember Kajit has joined the room? Ooh, we're up to five users now, yes. Does that mean we won't see you naked? Yes, I'm afraid that's true. I'm basically on the site to see what you guys are up to. It's kind of like a, a, a TV project. You're in your bed, I'm in my office chair. Do you guys spend a lot of time on here? 25 hours a day, so basically your whole life and more. Oh yeah, we're at 30 users now. Yay! Gino says, glad to see you're back. Saw you on last night. 
Yeah, I was on here yesterday. You're a chef? Wow, how much time do you spend on this thing? Depends. Do you spend a lot of time or money? Not, you're not on every day, okay. So maybe $100 a week, depending. Do you have a real life girlfriend? Yes, you do. Does she know that you use cam girl sites? She doesn't know you come on here. <laughs> Taco says, usually it's the girl that gets bombarded by questions. You turn this all around on its head. Yeah, this is a special project. <laughs> it's a special interview. How many users? Ooh, we're at 75 users now. How long have I been on? Where does it say? It doesn't say. Oh, wait. No, actually, it says seven minutes. Yes. 75 users. I know if I ever run out of a job to do, I can become a cam girl and hopefully make a lot of money. All right, I granted moderator privileges to Gino because he talks the most. <laughs> Is that like making you my virtual boyfriend? Jay Broadshow says, you guys are pretty much married if you chose a moderator. I'm starting to see how this works. I'm pretty confident I'm your boyfriend. Hmm. Do most of you have girlfriends in real life? Gino says he's sure a lot of them do. Huh. Oh wow, I'm at 140 users, yay! The interview will go better if you're topless. I don't think so. It's a TV assignment. 172 users, nice. Oh my god, Japan. No, I'm Korean. <laughs> Okay, now we're at 203 users. Oh no, software update required. It closed off my webcam. Oh no. My friends are gone. Where are my friends? <laughs> Your account has been banned for violating our terms and conditions. I guess they found us out. Oh no. <laughs> it was worth it though. <laughs> nice. It's, an, it's really interesting how everyone's just really conversational instead of I mean, like, there are obviously, like, a few creepy guys who are like, oh, you have to be topless, blah, 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 show us your boobs. But for the most part, they're all just, like, regular guys you would talk to at a bar or something. It was pretty amazing that we found this huge shift in the change in television shows, mm -hmm. values in television shows targeted to preteens. Right. We found this huge shift between 1997 and 2007. Uh -huh. Community feeling was the top value in shows um, in every year until 2007 when it dropped, dropped to number 11. Uh -huh. And in every other year, fame was at the bottom, and it was the number one value in the 2007 What shows. happened in 2007 to change Well, that? like one of the things that we speculate, we haven't proven it, is um, the internet mm -hmm. grew. So I think that, you know, they're giving kids tools to enact fame, and they're using them. The other, other day, I was a cam girl on one of the cam sites, mm -hmm. and for me, it's like I'm performing <laughs> for this whole audience yeah. of, like, admirers and fans. Yeah. Does that have anything to do with what what these kids might about. be, yeah. Yeah, this gives them a way to sort of curate their image online. Mm -hmm. They can figure out, and, and then that's like, you know, I mean, that's such an easy way for a girl to get status and attention, you know, and you can't really do that in the real world. So, mm -hmm. you know, so I would imagine there's, there's a part of it that is attractive for that reason. By the way, the one thing that we should all do is clear our history. <laughs> <laughs> Clear browsing data.